What is good everybody, today we are reviewing the Walmart exclusive Monday Night Wars WWE Ultimate Edition Bret Hart figure. Now coming into this figure from the neck down, I'm excited. I'm excited for it neck down. From the neck up, you might as well throw it the hell out in the yard. Not entirely, we're going to break it all down, but I uploaded a short about this figure yesterday, if you guys missed that, talking about the head sculpts on this figure, man, and woof, Brad. Your girlfriend, woof. But we're going to dive into the lore. We're going to get into all the details and see what this guy's all about, of course, but Bret Hart, this is his fourth Ultimate Edition we have seen from Mattel. He was way back in Series 2 with Shinsuke Nakamura. I think that was the set. He had a Legends Ultimate at Target. He has a Coliseum collection on Mattel Creations. And now he has a Walmart exclusive in the Monday Night Wars Ultimate Edition. So this should be a fun one. Lots of Bret Hart to go around and I know that everybody loves him. But today we're getting into this figure, man. Just look at my guy right here, man. Woo-wee, Brad. I don't know who the hell that looks like. He kind of looks like Brendan Fraser when he was a caveman. That movie's good. I like that. Is it Insano Man? What a damn classic. But he's got the black and pink looking good here. Got the big championship in here. I'm, I'm looking forward to this, man. I'm looking forward to this. Of course, as a store exclusive, you get the red box with the white accents. Spinning it around, you get a shot of Brett there. This is from 97, apparently. You got the classic WWE block logo, even though it doesn't have the F. But then you get some graphics on the back, of course, with the figure up there. You get a shot of Brett there, some bio read, all the different stuff going on. On this side, you get Brett the Hitman Hart with the WWE Ultimate Edition logo. And outside of that, it is your standard Ultimate Edition pack packaging for our Mattel WWE action figures, man. But with that being said, let's crack Bret Hart out of his packaging and see if this figure is indeed as bad as it looks from this angle here. So here's Bret the Hitman Hart out of his packaging, and also yesterday in our review, I think I said Roddy Rowdy Piper in my in my review initially, and I didn't catch it until editing, and I was like, man, what a jackass, can't believe I said that. But it's also, when I do these reviews, sometimes it's 1am, 2am, I'm very tired when doing this. Even if it doesn't come across, it may not sound like I'm actually reviewing this late at night. You may think I'm in the middle of the day, Brad. I'm in the middle of the nighttime, alright? Team no sleep over here, and it probably shows, but trying to give the people what they want. Trying to get these reviews in. But anyways, this is the Hitman. And he's looking pretty good. I will say there are things about the figure that I do not like. We are going to break into all of that, all the details here. We're going to dive into the accessories, of course, first off. And then we will take a closer look at the Hitman himself and dive into every single portion of this figure and get into the comparisons, not only with his Elites, but also his other three Ultimate Editions that he's previously had from Mattel. So let's shut the hell up and get into those accessories. So here's everything you get with Bret Hart, and I think that besides cloth goods, he checks all the boxes. Multiple heads, interchangeable arms, and you get a championship, which usually if you get interchangeable arms and a championship, you ain't getting no damn cloth goods, man. You can get that the hell out your head. Just go ahead and forget about it. Don't even, don't even look at him. But holy God in heaven, who is this? This doesn't look good to me, man. It's The eyes don't look right, and that really can throw off anybody's likeness, man, if the eyes aren't right. But I don't really mind the hair skull. You know, a lot of people don't like when the bangs go in the face, but this really doesn't bother me all that much, but this doesn't look like Bret Hart to me, and I just think that the eyes just completely lose it. He just looks, this looks like a badly painted figure from 99 or something, you know what I mean? The eyes look completely off to me, and I do not like it. Now, if we move on to this head sculpt, this is probably my favorite, and it's still not very good. It's, it's, it's got more likeness, but I still don't like it. I don't know. They just completely missed the mark for me on all three of these head sculpts. The mouth open head sculpt, it just looks like he's, I, I don't even know, like he's talking to his grandpa Joe or something. I just do not like these head sculpts. They completely miss the mark, and that's kind of the trend with Bret Hart's figures. They miss a lot of the time when it comes to Bret Hart, and that's unfortunate. His best figure head sculpts are probably the Elite 94. That's my personal favorite, but these head sculpts are a miss. These are a miss, and I, I don't like them. Now, we also get the WWF Championship, which is always beautiful. I always say it, though. They make the plates too thick, and it's not detailed enough. I would like to see some more deeper cuts into the championship. I think they should invest more into making the championships more accurate instead of just keep rolling with the same one. It's time to make some upgrades here. They've made improvements in other ways. I think the championships are the next step, but it is a nice championship to have, and at least it looks good. It's got the blue globe in there. Now, as far as the shades are concerned, it is like a regular mold, and then they it's a regular mold, and then they put this holographic sticker on there, which I don't ever like, because you guys can see it gets wrinkled, and then it kind of messes it up. But 
but it will help with some of these head sculpts. You know, you don't like the likeness, you throw the glasses on there, and you may be able to get over it. You know, you just gotta put it on correctly here. But for the most part, you know, I don't know. And say what you will about the sculpt and the accuracy of the glasses. I'm not a stickler like that for Bret Hart, but I'm sure people would let me know. I don't know. I just don't like the way it looks. I would love to see them, you know, nail that, that reflective material. It's not horrific, but look, mine got wrinkled, and now it's kind of over with, you know? So, there, that's just one of the things that I notice about it immediately, but it will improve the head sculpts. It's just not gonna be ground shattering, I guess, in terms of display. Now, he also comes with the leather jacket that we are seeing on the Roddy Piper Ultimate Edition that is also in this wave, and then it also comes with the Eric Bischoff, except it does have the Hitman logo with the Heart Foundation on the back, which I think is a nice touch. Very clean right here, which I like, and if you guys want to add this to the figure, we've seen it before, but, you know, you would pop the arms out, pop the head sculpt off, and then you would slide the jacket on here, and then you would put the jacket arms, which are a nice sculpt. We saw these on the Roddy Piper as well, and you just plug these in here, and you get a two-in-one figure, essentially. You can make the entrance gear, or you can make the wrestling gear for Bret Hart, whichever one that you want to have here. That looks pretty good there, and then you would take the head sculpt, Pop this on here, which looks pretty good. At least the smiling head sculpt's my favorite one out of all of them. But then there you go. There's a little shot, and we'll look at him when we compare all the figures to kind of take a look. But the jacket is nice. I like the jacket arms, and they feel good on here. They're not loose or anything, so I think that's all you can ask for. And I actually like this sculpt of the jacket very well, so yeah, I like this a lot. Now in the next shot, we will take a look at what it looks like with these arms, but you also get the wrestling gear arms that have pink wrist tape and elbow pads. I wish they'd give us the open elbow pads, but I'll take it for what it is, but you also get the Johnny Gargano Elite 105. Newly sculpted and tooled Ricochet Kawhi Leonard style hands, but they are better. They're not as long. They don't look as bad. Speaking of Kawhi Leonard, got his ass eliminated by Luca. Hell yes. But he also comes with mic holding hands that make the world go in realm. And then you guessed it, he also comes with fisted hands to beat the hell out of people. So getting into Brett at the head sculpt, this is, like I said, my favorite one, I think. It sure as hell ain't the one where he looks like he's not even himself. It looks like he saw a damn ghost or something in a cartoon. And then the mouth open just looks goofy. So I'm going with the smirk here. But this is pretty much just a repaint of an existing Bret Hart. We saw this in the Legends Target exclusive, and we saw this in the Coliseum collection. We're going to get into the comparisons, but I have always loved his graphics here in the front with the skull and the heart. Got the wings coming off it, and it does continue underneath, so that's good. But got a little pink schmutz right there, which is unfortunate, but the black and pink is always very clean. They, it's such complementary colors. Pink wrist tape elbow pads look good. If you spin it around, it's just a blank singlet. He's got the butterfly joints, and then he does have Hitman on the but got the white and the pink just going all down. This has always just been super clean. He's got some of the best gear, man. The pink and black and white. And it's so just, you know, you can identify this pattern or this look and it's immediate Bret Hart or Hart, you know, related. And that's what you like to see out of a wrestling talent. You don't ever want to be like, what the hell is this? Branding and all that stuff is very important. And so I like that a lot. You got the hearts going down there. We also have some more Hitman on the side. We get the black knee pads. Now he is on pinless joints, which is going to affect the articulation, but he has some of the best boots in the game. I've talked about it for years on the channel. Even made a best wrestling action figure boots or best wrestling boots of all time video you need to check out on the channel. Still hold, it still stands the test of time. Now in terms of this figure's articulation, you do get the drop down hips, which is going to allow for a pretty good 90 degree, if not a little bit above, but always be careful there. You do get the thigh swivel. The double jointed knee is definitely tight, which I hate and despise, and it makes me want to vomit. But you also get boot swivel. The ankles go down and up, and he does have the toe pivot there. And then you do get a nice butterfly joint in here. The only thing I don't like about no open elbow pads, which they may not have been accurate at this exact time, it will hinder the double jointed arm. But double jointed arm always crushes a single jointed arm, and we're always going to celebrate that. Begged for that for for years from Mattel, but they finally got it to us. But the butterfly joints are pretty damn good on this Bret Hart. Look at that right there. He can expand way backwards, which is nice. But this Bret Hart figure, it is pretty much a repaint. It's a, it's I'd say it's a less quality repaint of the Target Exclusive. I like the Target Exclusive Legends better, but let's get into some Bret Hart Ultimate Edition comparisons, and then we'll take a look at some other Bret Hart figure comparisons in terms of this Ultimate Edition. Now, for your Ultimate Edition figure comparisons from left to right, we have the Coliseum Collection Bret Hart here on the left, the new Walmart Exclusive Monday Night Wars Ultimate, the Target Exclusive Legends Ultimate, and then the first ever Ultimate here. I don't have the greatest hits or anything. This is the original Bret Hart here with some Elite Boots switched out, but for the most part, this 
this is every Ultimate Brett we've seen so far. It's kind of crazy that he has four. They're very similar, in fact, but he did wear black and pink for a majority of his career, if not all of it. You know, there were some one-offs and some different gears, but this is what he's known for, man. You know, that branding look, and I think all of these are solid figures. If I had to rank them, it would probably go dead last. I just don't like the non-addition of the butterfly joints. I didn't like any of the head sculpts on this figure, so I would probably put him in dead last. I would probably put the Coliseum Collection next, then this at two, and then this at one, just because I prefer this version of Brett over this version of Brett, but I still like this version and this figure. It's just not my favorite of all time, but I would go four, three, two, one. I still think the Legends Target Exclusive Ultimate is still the best Ultimate Edition of Bret Hart that we've seen, but it is certainly nice to see this Ultimate, this new one, Mon Monday Night Wars Walmart Exclusive, up next to the rest of our Ultimate Edition Bret Hart figures we've seen so far from Mattel, and I'm sure this won't be the last one, which is kind of crazy. So for your Elite figure comparisons with this new Ultimate, we do have a slew of different action figures here of Bret Hart Elites. We have the, from left to right, Survivor Series Elite Bret Hart, the two-pack with Goldberg Elite Bret Hart, the new Ultimate Edition, you have the new Defining Moments, or the most recent Defining Moments Elite Bret Hart here, the Elite 94 Chase, and the regular Elite 94, and all of these, again, man, the black and pink, for the most part, you know, just pick your favorite gear, pick your favorite versions, and go with it, unless Bret Hart's your guy. We are missing the first Defining Moments over here, we're missing the Elite 43, I think it was, we're missing the Ringside Exclusive King of the Ring Bret, there's another Bret Hart I'm missing, but I can't place it in my brain, oh yeah, the All Pink Attack Ringside Exclusive from years back, so I don't have them all, but this is a good comparison, you can kind of see what you're working with here when you look at this, but this is my first all black one that I've owned in my collection, so I'm certainly grateful to have that in the collection in terms of an all black attire for, for Bret Hart. But at the end of the day, I think that pretty much wraps up our Walmart exclusive Monday Night Wars WWE Ultimate Edition Hitman Bret Hart. I know I said it out of order. I'm just I'm just going off the tongue there. But at the end of the day, I do like this figure. I feel like the, the, the pinless joints ruined it, man. I definitely prefer the Legends Target exclusive. If you don't want this specific look of Bret Hart, this is completely skippable in my honest opinion, man. If you do not want this attire in Ultimate Edition form, there's plenty of head sculpts you can swap it with, I'm sure. You know, if you don't have any other Ultimate Bretts or Elite Bretts, you could put the Elite 94 head sculpt on there. You could put one of those Legends Target exclusive head sculpts on there. And you can play around with it and see if you can make your own Bretts. The head sculpts on this are definitely lacking. I do not like any of the head sculpts for sure on this head sculpt. I think the mouth wide open one looks weird. This one's probably my favorite, the smirking one, and it's still not even the best. Every time I look at a Bret Hart figure from Mattel, I immediately think of Ozzy Osbourne. And so that's just something that comes to mind when I'm looking at it. And I don't hate the figure, but the legs are certainly tight. And if you, again, man, if you do not want this gear in ultimate form, I don't see why you'd want this figure. I really don't. I don't think that it's necessary. While I do love this gear and it is sick, I prefer the all pink. I'm, I'm more of a pink guy, man. I'd rather have the pink Target exclusive Legends one and the legs aren't as tight. So that's other bonus points for me there. And I would prefer the Target exclusive. If you can track down the Target exclusive over this, again, unless you just want this specific look, you want this specific era, completely skippable in that regard. So you will just have to take it up there, man. That's up to you. But that pretty much wraps up all of my thoughts on this Bret Hart. I think that it's a solid addition to the line, I guess. It wouldn't be my first pick for Monday Night Wars Ultimate Edition, but here we are. And, you know, it's another Bret Hart Ultimate to add to the catalog of Ultimate Bret Harts we've seen so far. So we shall see what happens later on down the line with Bret Hart. But he has so many figures, and I don't even own all of them, man. I'm missing quite a few from my collection, and I feel like I have a decent amount of them. So we will have to see where he comes in next in our figure collections from Mattel. But that is going to wrap up the review, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I'd love to know your thoughts on this figure down below. Is it skippable? Do you like the head sculpts? Are you on the fence? What do you say down in the comment section? I feel like the most, for the most part, a lot of people are digging at the head sculpts and they don't like it, but I would like to know where you guys stand down below. But a huge shout out to our Patreon members, man. Thank you guys so very much for all that you guys do. You guys are absolutely incredible and I appreciate each and every single one of you guys for sure. If you guys would like to follow me on other socials, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, all my damn toys, one word straight across there. I'd greatly appreciate it. But I'm getting out of here, man. Thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. I'll see you guys next time. Have a blessed one and I'll catch you later. <laughs>